hey guys welcome to another level design video and this time we're gonna be talking about an awesome tool that if you're a level designer and you're using unreal engine you should be using it like right now okay so let's jump into the video to start using this tool all you have to do is go to the modeling tab on the top left like right here go to the modeling tab if you don't see this tab right here you can just go to edit go to plugins right here and just uh write modeling you should be able to see uh, the tab right here. So it should be modeling tools, editor mode. So you just click it, restart the engine and come back into the uh, main tab right here. Once you have it uh, turned on, just click the modeling tab and you're gonna see all these options. There's a lot of options. Modeling is really powerful in Unreal Engine. I'm gonna be making another video later about other modeling things that you can use to make uh, simple assets, props, or you know things you can use in your level design. But for now, let's focus on Cupid. I have a simple map right here, uh, just pretty much empty with some simple props and buildings. So just make sure to make a, an empty map or make sure to be in the map you're gonna do the level design. And as soon as you're there, you're gonna head into the poly model tab right here. And there's an option called Cupid, okay? So this is the one you're gonna choose. This one has all the options, it has all the things you need to make the simple assets for cube so you see you have the pull push slide back you have a bunch of options here the ones you're going to be using the most are going to be the pull and push and you also see there's like a hot key there so for pulling you can press e for push you can press q and the other one that i use the most is the corner mode but we're going to be talking about that one later on uh so yeah so you have this option right here uh current block size uh, it starts at 100. I usually like to put it at 50, but for the video, uh, let's leave it at 100. That's basically the size of the grid. So the smaller the size, so for example, 50, you're going to have more flexibility when you want to pull or push objects uh, basically around the map. So let's leave it at 100. And now you can scroll all the way down and take a look at uh, the output type and the material right here. So let's start with the material. This is pretty simple. Uh, all these uh, what it says is what material that object is going to have when you make it. So if you have it on none, it's going to have the default material uh, from Unreal Engine. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, but you can also assign a material right here and every object you make in the cube grid, it's going to start, it's going to appear with that material. So for example, I have a material right here called top dark. It's basically for prototyping assets or prototyping levels. I just assigned that material right over here. And every object I make should have that material when I uh, press accept right here. So now output type. This is really important, okay? So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna start on static mesh. This is basically the default, and you have multiple options right here. So you have the volume and the dynamic mesh. So it all depends what do you want to have in your level. So for example, if you choose static mesh, uh, basically what the name says is gonna be making a static mesh. So static mesh is more for static objects that basically are not going to move around the map so for example like a building uh maybe any other object that you, you know that's going to be there because it's standing still uh you can also use dynamic mesh and i don't know make a, a, a building from this uh, again a building is not going to be moving but you can also have a dynamic if you want uh, but usually uh, if you want to make like a building i don't know i can just choose static mesh but the most important thing here uh it's not that it's if it's moving or not uh, it's just the flexibility that it offers so for example if i make a static mesh object it's going to be saving that object in your project folder right here as you see i made some simple buildings and as soon as i press accept it made uh an op uh an asset right here that's going to be making it on the generated folder under your name and then it's going to be making the asset right here and this is really cool because you can reuse these assets in other maps you know it's like you just go to the other maps drag and drop and start making your level design or any other uh, mechanic or block that you want to make there. Uh, contrary to the dynamic mesh, you know, this is uh, it's not actually as flexible as the static mesh because dynamic is going to stay in one map. You can use that dynamic uh, on another map, but you're going to have to copy and paste it to their other map. Okay, so it's a little bit different. It all depends on, you know, what do you want to do? Uh, basically, your goals with the level design and you know, what do you want to make at the end? So let's say I want to use a static mesh right here. I can just click it. And now I'm ready to start making the level design. So I'm going to be going a little bit far away from this area, for example, like here. And 
let's say I want to make a floor. So I can just click from one area and drag it all the way down to the other area. And I should have like this uh, grid selected and I can just press E. And there you go. You have that floor ready to, uh, to add some mechanics on top or just do some simple stuff there. This is like playing Minecraft basically. So it's really easy, really simple. And it's the good thing is that it's a, a you know a fast and iterative process that you're not gonna take a lot of a lot of time. So let's say I want to make it bigger. So I can just click from one area and drag it all the way to the other side. Like this, just press E. There you go. I have a bigger floor right now. Another trick with this is that instead of just dragging, you can just click one uh, end, hold shift, and click the other end like this. You should be able to select that area. There you go. That floor should work. And now, since I choose static mesh, I can just press accept. And it's going to be making uh, a new cube, cube grid object, a static mesh object in my generated folder. So I think this should be under map. Uh, it should have, it should, you should have it there. And then you can just, you know, drag and drop to any other level like I mentioned before. So really simple, really easy. And it's, you know, it's a really fast uh, method. So now this is awesome because you can have the, the, the collision already uh, made for you. So you don't have to worry about anything else. You can just start prototyping the level. Really simple. Now that I have that floor, I can uh, make some buildings. For example, uh, I can just go again to cube grid, deselect my old, old object. That's a really important thing. Make sure deselect any other uh, cube grid object uh, before making a new one. Because if you make a change, uh, let's say you want to make a building and you haven't deselected the other object uh, and you save those changes, you're going to override your old uh, building or floor and it's going to break. So Make sure to deselect any other object and just go back again to cube right here and you can start uh, making some buildings so for example uh let's say i want to make a like a huge building like this and i want to make a i don't know like a door i can just select that area like this and then i just press q to push and just push all the way to the end i always like to do it until i don't see the wall anymore like this and then just press E, boop, and it goes back again. And now if you want to make the interiors, you can just click. Uh, you can click from here, but I usually like to uh, push it a little bit more like this from the second one all the way to the end. Make sure, yep, make sure it doesn't select the exterior. And now you can press Q and it's going to delete that area outside like this. And now let's go to the other area right here. Uh-huh. And now let's go to the, the the ceiling. Same thing. You can press up. And sometimes you maybe you did a little bit more like this. You can just select that area and just press E to go down. Boop, and press it again, and that should work. And now you can just press accept, and it's it's gonna make another building like this. Same thing. You can just drag and drop it anywhere you want, and it's really fast and really easy. So now if I wanna uh, you know, test uh, the level or the building. I can just play from here. Uh, it's really dark. <laughs> I don't see uh, in the inside, but that should work. So now let's say you want to have a ramp in order to get to the rooftop of the building. And that's another thing you can do with cube grid. That's why I think this is one of the most powerful tools you have in a real engine. If you're making levels and what you can do is make sure to click the building you just created and go back again to cube grid tool right here. So now choose the, the face you want to have as a ramp. So for example, I want to have this area right here. I can just select that area and press corner mode. And I'm going to have this four uh, dots right here. And I'm going to select the two at the bottom. Again, this is this is uh, drag. So just hold the left click button and drag on those buttons. If you want to deselect them, hold it again and drag it back. So let's drag those two. And now you can press E. And you can make a ramp like this. Pretty simple, pretty easy, and pretty straightforward. Like this. Doesn't look pretty, but it, it works. So you can just accept. And you can have that change overwrite over everything right here in your object. Uh, now I can just go to this uh, floor right here. And I can tweak it real quick just to make it a little bit more flexible for me to go there. Like this. And now I can just right click and start from here and play this our area. So for example, you saw that ramp. 
it should have the collision it should work and now you can just you know reach higher areas and this is really important if you want to have verticality in your levels you know mostly we want to have that verticality in the level design so a ramp is really important you know like stairs or any other object that can help you reach higher areas and this is really easy you know this is really simple you don't have to worry about collisions really simple and really quick so yeah there you have there you have the ramp that should work now that you know the basics of this tool you can use it to make some interesting environments or interesting level designs so for example let me, let's say i i want to jump back into the main map i made before i have these buildings right here um let's say i want to move this uh, building to the left to the right and then i want to drag and drop the building i just made and let's say uh there's a mission here or a quest that you're in a city and you have to climb the building and then you have to jump from one building to the other so let's make like a like a hatch or a, a hole in this building right here really easy you can just uh push save again since i affected this asset right here it's going to override the other uh, buildings uh and it's going to change that area over there so just make sure that if you want to make a change you're 100 percent you know safe that you want to do it and because it's going to affect the other buildings around so uh, but now that i have that over there i can just play tested and let's say i need to climb this building in order to jump to this other building right over there and complete an objective on the rooftop so i can just run over here and jump there you go <laughs> so yeah things like that you can do like interesting approaches to the level design and again this tool is really powerful use it to make awesome things and again the most important thing is to just have fun and make like interesting stuff because the tool is there you know there's a lot of things you can use with unreal engine the tool is there and like i mentioned at the beginning if you're a level designer this is one tool you had to start using like right now so guys that's gonna be all for this video stay tuned to the channel because i'm gonna be making more videos like this where i'm basically gonna uh, provide you some resources or talk about tools that you can use as a level designer to make cool and interesting stuff in your levels um so yeah if you like it leave a like subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you guys later.